Howdy, folks. How y'all doing? Hey, it's been a minute, hasn't it? Um, yeah, I apologize. I basically went blind. I got uh, uveitis in one eye, and then it spread to the other, and yeah, I couldn't see for a while. Anywho, um, got that issue resolved, and now we're back to it. Uh, today, we're, uh, well, I'm just showing you what's coming. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a set of bookshelf speakers. But this is part of a larger system. A subwoofer from uh, Dayton Auto. It's a whole 5.1 uh, Dayton Auto surround sound is what I put together here. But I put it together, uh, you know, piece by piece. I didn't buy a kit. I, uh, well, you'll, you'll see why later on, why, why I did what I did. But uh, anywho, um, yeah, the, this thing just showed up. <laughs> UPS, gotta love them. Huh? Yeah, it's like that every time anywho um we got a 12 inch uh powered sub uh, i got uh because these are, are so ridiculously cheap i got three sets of those you know two fit in each box the six and a half inch drivers there the six and a half inch bookshelf speak book shelf speakers i should say and i got the uh their air version the with the uh yeah the air motion transformer uh tweeter because, well, I, I just like them. They're just better. Yeah, they're, they're really actually my favorite tweeter anymore. But uh, I'm not saying this particular version. We're going to test it and see how exactly it measures up. But, uh, you know, I got everything to do a complete surround sound system, including stands. We're going to do a review on that next. And, uh, yeah, move along, move along. But, uh, yeah, we, we got a whole system here. I'm going to go through it piece by piece and uh, test each each component and uh, do a separate uh, video on each one. And then at the end of it, I'm gonna put it in its final resting place, which is gonna be in my father-in-law's house. He's uh, elderly, hard of hearing, and that was the point and purpose of this. He's, you know, for his entire life, I mean, all he's ever really known is crap radios, you know, the little crap speaker that's in little portable radios and that kind of stuff and uh, television speakers. So he has no experience with a proper surround sound system. I didn't want to spend, you know, buku mega bucks on a system for him because I don't know exactly how much he's going to use it. But being hard of hearing as I know he is, watching a lot of TV as I know he does, this should absolutely fit the bill. So, I mean, we're going to put it through the paces and test it out and set it up and test it out again. But uh, we're going to do it piece by piece scientifically. I'm still going to give you my opinion. I'm still going to tell you what I think personally of each and every component here, but um, no, the data is going to tell you which side is north. You, you know what I mean? It's it, Don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just got an opinion like everybody else, but uh, unlike everybody else that keeps doing this stuff, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to show you the, the matter of fact, the actual science, the provable numbers. I can prove what I'm talking about here. Alrighty, now that we're uh, pretty much down to her, I uh, don't want to get too far ahead of myself. You know, I have a tendency to do that. Uh, today's video is brought to you by extension cords. Because sometimes you need to extendify your power. How else are you going to do it, right? You got extension cords for that job. <laughs> yes, extension cords. <laughs> Anywho, moving along. Um, you got a box. You got two speakers in a box. You get a uh, little uh, pamphlet there and you get two, uh, whatever, two little, uh, whatever. You get a little speaker wire. It's, it's baby 22, boy, 20, yeah, I'm gonna call it 20 gauge. It's some paper thin stuff, cheesy. But you know, uh, what do you want for a nickel? These things were so dirt cheap. Uh, $79 a pair, I think, is what I paid for them. A pair. That's $40 a speaker. You know, round it off, break it down. That's what it breaks down to. Uh, 40 bucks a speaker. Oh, that's that's cheap crap price, but what do they sound like? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let me show you what I'm going to use to measure, and uh, then we'll continue along here. All right, to, uh, to start with here, I'm going to be using a mini DSP sound analysis microphone don't worry about the rubber band on the end there i have that there for because i i i hang <laughs> i hang things and stuff from it 
Um, it's got no bearing on sound quality here, but uh, this is a proper sound analysis microphone. It'll run you all of about a hundred bucks if you want to get one for yourself. And the software to drive this, or the software that uses this type of stuff, is free. It's absolutely free. I'll put links to everything down in the description. Uh, the uh, the information is out there. It's just you know, <laughs> at a certain point, everybody that's doing these kinds of reviews, they, they, it's time to upgrade. That's all I'm saying. You know, talk is talk. This is where the science comes from. This this allows you to prove what the damn thing is doing. No talk is, is required aside from personal opinion because that's all that it equals in the end. So you need a sound analysis microphone. And then I have ears, same company, Mini DSP. Again, I'll put a link to down in the description, but uh, this is how I'm going to allow you to hear these speakers in this room and it will be equivalent to you actually being here. Um, I can take true binaural sound samples of two speakers playing, you know, at, at, at different various positions in this room and you can hear what it's gonna actually sound like. It's, it's going to be the equivalent of you actually being here. So when I talk about something, I can back it up. You know what I mean? It's not personal opinion. You're going to hear exactly what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, those two things. Now, this one's going to, you know, the ears are going to run you a couple bucks. That's about 300. Now, the specification is on these. I'm, I'm sure you've probably already seen them, but I'm just going to go them once real quick. Like, I'm not even going to take it out of the plastic. I'll just read it to you. Uh, they're 40 watts RMS, 75 watts peak or maximum. Uh, they're 6 ohm impedance. The uh, rated specifications here, frequency response, is 70 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And their sensitivity is 87 decibels at 1 watt at 1 meter. So, you know, those are the basic uh, important measurements. Everything else is dimensional on weight and kind of meaningless, right? Um, I'll tell you what, first impressions of the things, cheesy. I mean, honest to God, that's, that's what it feels like. You know, just cheese. It doesn't feel like, well, you know what? It, it feels like what it cost. <laughs> that's what it feels like. It's, it's got a, you know, a hanger there on the back end, like a picture frame hanger. And, you know, it just paper thin, everything paper feather weight you know it doesn't weigh a damn thing um yeah that's first impressions of it that's what it feels like it feels like what i paid <laughs> you know what i mean i mean that's just the honest to god's truth but you know that doesn't re really matter all that really matters is what does it sound like so um yeah that's uh hell let's move along with that right uh i do have because i i, I bought six of these and i only need five of them i do have one that is technically uh sacrificial i do have one that uh you know we can take apart and play with it let's see if let's see if spending another two dollars can make you know any kind of a um a realistic imp improvement um but uh, i have already listened to them and i, I gotta tell you uh, i kind i, I kind of like them <laughs> there there's there's potential here um, they, they're full of flaws, but I kind of like them. They're, they're, you know, Christ's sake, man, for the 80 bucks for the pair of them. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. And I do believe it's, it's fixable in, in many ways. It's, it's fixable. Anywho, let's, uh, let's stop talking. Let's, let's start getting into the numbers because that's the only way I'm going to really be able to back up what I'm about to say next. I took some, uh, four measurements I took well I took a bunch of measurements which I will show you um, getting there getting there but uh, now I have a uh, I have uh, on axis on speaker and then I have in room at distance a uh, couple of different ways I measured but uh, I saw what I saw I heard what I heard now I want to take one of these apart like I said I have one that's technically sacrificial I'm not gonna break one but uh, you know if, if something bad happens to one, well, <laughs> that's all right. I do have one that I could, you know, sacrifice. Anyway, I'm gonna take it apart. We're gonna check out, see what's, uh, see what's going on inside of these things. Uh, by the uh, looks of it, not a lot of, but uh, I'm gonna throw a couple dollars at it and see if we can, uh, you know, make things better or worse. We're gonna get at least get a sense of direction. That's my game plan here, anywho. Anyway, uh, let me 
you know, rip some screws out here and uh, get into it. Yeah, I'm seeing what I thought I was hearing and uh, well, I'm getting what I expected. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, eh, paper, it's, eh, yeah, it's, it's paper. Uh, barely, oh Christ, is it, is it 5 16th? You know what? Let me grab a caliper quick and, and I'll tell you exactly what it is. Zero my caliper here. And let's just, uh, ah, seven mil. I think you can see. If we get her centered and maybe beat the glare just a little. Yeah, I hope you can see it. I, I can't see it. Honestly, it's all too small for me. Anyway, seven mil, which comes out to, um, I like this. Nine thirty seconds of an inch, in case you was wondering, <laughs> or uh, you know, two thousandths of or two hundredths of an inch. There, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 paper thin, but you know, what do you want for a nickel? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, there's hardly any cost involved, and in, you, you get some bang for the buck. I mean, there's some real serious bang for the buck. Let me reposition the camera here and we'll we'll try and get a little closer inside. Well, I mean, what do you want for a nickel, huh? Um, it's it's not it's not terrible. It really it isn't. There's your uh, well, something like that. There's the crossover. Um, what little bits and pieces there are. It look looks like one resistor and one capacitor no kidding that's it oh well then uh that's all for the tweeter i'll bet you because normally these amt tweeters are, are seen as pretty much a short uh so you gotta have a little resistance in line yeah i want to show you you gotta have a little resistance with them uh yeah <laughs> but anyway i mean that like the tweeter it's 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 plastic, but it it's feels like there's a rubberized coating on it. It it's uh, yeah, they did a little something to it. Um, my thinking, and and I, I I expected exactly this. I you know, nothing tissue. Yeah, yeah I, I, honestly, I think paper towel would have been better than this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I have. Well, here, let me show you what I have. All right, here's uh, here's my basic thinking. Um, I'm seeing what I expected. Uh, it's, you know, pretty much a hollow box. I bought a little bit of uh, gasket tape, very thin stuff, because I expected this just to be, you know, crudely, quickly mounted, you know, uh, stamped steel basket to, you know, paper thin wooden box. I expected that. They're technically sealed enclosures, but I'm gonna make them sealed with a uh, little gasket tape. That should make a difference, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Well, I guess we're gonna, find out when I retest them again. And then I got, <laughs> oh, where are we at? Ah, screw it, I can't uh, can't get it all on in one shot here. It's a big box, five pounds of polyfill. Uh, yeah, you know, polyfill, the, the, the stuff that they build, you know, cheap crap pillows with, uh, stuffed animals, teddy bears, you know, and child toys, those kinds of things. Just, you know, polyfill. It's, uh, it's probably the worst version of sound dampening material that you could use what would be better and uh, i mean if you have it by all means use it fiberglass insulation is better you do have to be a little careful um polyfill is paper thin i mean it's it's it weighs about as much as air i mean it, it, it's that's a five pound box that's why the box is so big you know what i mean uh, you got to use a lot of it and what it does what it has a tendency of doing is it makes it makes the box sound bigger. It makes base hit better, tighter, cleaner. And being a sealed box, I love sealed enclosures. I mean, they're they're absolutely my favorite. And uh, I, I, I still think they're the best out there. And you know, you know it because I've just told you my opinion. And that's the problem, it's my opinion. It's what I like. It may not be what all of you guys like. I know a lot of you guys really like ported subs and I freaking hate them. Once you hear that port noise, you can't stop hearing it. So again, opinions don't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you mine, but what matters in the end here for you to base any kind of a judgment uh, behind your computer screen or TV or however you're watching this, 
look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie, right? The numbers are just what they are. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna stuff the thing full of polyfill. I'm going to uh, actually seal with a little gasket tape these speakers into place, and uh, I'm gonna run exactly the same test, exactly the same way, and note the difference. I expect there will be something, but uh, this is literally like the two dollars that I'm willing to throw at it. You know, you, you could get more involved with a crossover because clearly they ain't got nothing going on there. They're just doing a little, you know, first order on this tweeter, that's all that is. A resistor, you know, to, to so the receiver doesn't see a short, and then, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, a little cap there to block some of the base. It doesn't get much cheesier than that. And of course, the question will be, how much polyfill to use? Um, about that much. You know, it's, it's in there. I gave, you know, just enough room for the, the driver, but it's, it's feeling kind of dense. I'm starting to feel resistance. You know, it's not, uh, there's something there now. You, you know what I mean? Uh, air moves on, on both sides of the speaker. So that's, uh, well, that's, that's the point. When you dampen this, you dampen different resonances. You can dampen, uh, uh, some of the uh, resonance that comes from the speaker and you can dampen some of the resonance that comes from the box. Uh, yeah, the sound works in funny ways and it, uh, you know, it moves on both sides of the speaker. Now what, uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use this gasket tape like I showed you earlier and uh, yeah, we're going to actually, well, we're going to give it the old college try here, really actually sealing these drivers in place and kind of go from there. And uh, looks a little something like that. Not the nicest tape lay I've ever done in my life, but you know, it's going to do its job. Nicely uh, gonna seal these up, I believe. I put the tweeter in, obviously. Um, that that was that was fun, that was tight. I maybe should have shown that before I did it. I ran the foam, uh, yeah, gasket tape stuff, like along this edge, like standing up along this edge, and then just let it kind of pull it in and sit and settle where it wanted to go from that point uh putting it putting it down flat man that that tweeter's a tight fit they the uh whatever the cnc machine that they you know cut all the stuff out with definitely did its job so there's not a lot of wiggle room but uh yeah i think i think it's fine i well, i know it's going to be fine uh is it going to sound any different i don't know um i noticed it does seem to be a little bit recessed that the the tweeter face to the the front baffle here it's hopefully you're seeing some of that uh, putting that gasket tape in there picked it up a touch so it, it's a little more flush now with the front is that going to make a difference i don't know that's why we're going to test it so uh yeah i'm gonna well, there's nothing more to show and tell here i'm just going to put this driver back in and uh, get on with the testing it's about that time to get on with the uh testing and the measurements here talking uh all about them numbers them numbers um this is actually my favorite part of well speaker testing i i guess you could say uh, i enjoy listening to and i enjoy testing but uh all right let's uh move along here what i've done i did before and then i did after measurements and i did on speaker and then i did in room at distance and let me just break that down for you guys. This, sorry, that's my uh, cat sneezing. <laughs> Poor guy. He's got a nose full of snot right now. Anyway, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is the tweeter on axis on speaker. And I'll throw a picture of it right in here so you can, well, you can see exactly how I physically measured this. Uh, I ran it full range, 20 to 20. And uh, yeah, this is what the tweeter's doing when you're just, when you're practically kissing the damn thing with a microphone. You know what I mean? Uh, this is what it looks like, and that looks like crap. <laughs> it just does. It doesn't start, oh, I, and also I measured everything at 80 decibels. Everything was set uh, using uh, pink noise to 80 decibels. So that's how all measurements were, were taken here. On axis, on speaker, 80 decibels, full sweep, 20 to 20. And uh, yeah, there you go. So that is pretty ugly. I know, I know, <laughs> I don't like it either. 
this is what the woofer looks like. Same, same thing, on axis, on speaker, you know, kissing the damn thing. And uh, again, 20 to 20. Well, I don't think I ran this to 20. Not this one, I didn't, uh, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I stopped somewhere around five or six. But, uh, I mean, normally you, you, you want a little extra, extra down here in the low end, but no, nah, I'm not hearing it. I, I'm telling you, I, I don't hear that. Uh, when you get it up against a wall, this starts to stand out to you. You can hear it then, but I mean, just on speaker, you know, put it in the middle of the room, play some music, you know, stuff that you really know. Uh, man, I mean, I'm measuring it. It's there, but I'm not hearing it. Anyway, that's what the woofer looks like. On speaker, on axis, 80 decibels. Now, things change a bit here when you, uh, when you sum them together and you start getting some room modes involved. Like here I took a measurement at three feet away from the speaker. In my room, again, 20 to 20. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's looking a whole lot different now, right? You're still seeing this, this bump down here on the low end um, against the wall, which is where I have the speaker. And, you know, using the, the speaker boundary reinforcement and whatnot, you know, because I'm right up against that wall. Yeah, now I, I can hear this. I mean, it's, it's there. Uh, but that's, that's, I mean, these speakers just don't have no, they don't have no guts down low until you, you know, get them up close against a wall. Then they, uh, then they wake up quite a bit for you, or at least they have for me. And now these are all just out of the box as, you know, as the speakers are measurements. But anyway, this is the speaker from three foot away from it. Uh, and the microphone was centered between woofer and tweeter. So yeah, this is what it starts to look like in my room. And then I took another one here at six feet away. Mm. Kind of the same story with a different tune though, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, this is why, this is why, uh, this is why talking about is so futile. I, I can I can tell you what I hear and what I like and what I don't, but nah, you, you just gotta see the numbers. We all need the numbers and this is universal. I don't care if you're Chinese or Russian <laughs> or, or English or British, everybody can look at this and understand it, right? That, that's why I, I just, I'm a, I'm a numbers man. I just, I just am. Breaks all language barriers right here. <laughs> I'm talking to the world and the world can understand this. So um, yeah, this is out of the box. This is what it looks like. This is what it does. And it, it changes more with greater distance, but I stopped here at six foot. When I do the, uh, when I play these samples for you, and I do have some uh, music samples that I will play. I, I said it somewhere in here. Um, I'm doing everything out of time, so I can't remember what I said where. I gotta throw this all together into one cohesive video, hopefully. Anyway, uh, when I do those samples, um, you're, you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna get more of my room, but I'm doing it eight, eight feet away from both speakers, and you will get a stereo sample because I'm, I'm, I'm running both speakers and you're eight foot away from both of them. Uh, in case I don't say it later, I just said it here. All right, uh, I will, at this point now, show you what I, well, how they measure after, after modifications. And let me open that one up here. Things changed a bit. It was, uh, it was worth, it was worth, you know, the couple of dollars and cents that I spent on the things. It really was. Uh, after, after, after. Okay, this should be, well, here, let's, uh, let's do it like this. Show you everything in one shot. That way we can do a proper comparison. Um, let's get just the tweeter. Tweeter and tweeter, there we go. All right. Now, I didn't expect, you know, much from sealing it and, uh, you know, stuff in the box and whatnot, but the same exact test, same same exact way, on speaker, on axis, right up on the thing, kissing it, you know what I mean? Uh, before and after poly. Uh, this, this blue line here is after the modification, that's with gasket and polyfill, and this one is before gasket and polyfill. Yeah, there's a difference. I mean, is it, it, it's, it's only a couple decibels in a couple of areas, but you know, 
it, it's it's a difference. It definitely uh, it, it it changed a couple things there. Uh, is it worth it? No, not 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 there. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't think so anyway. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't go through the effort just for this little bit of difference. But uh, uh, let me show you what the uh, woofer did. Um, before and after. There we go. Uh, same same deal. Before and after polyfill. What the uh, the woofer did after polyfill is we get a little bit more bass, and it's a lot smoother. This drop off here, and, you know, it, it digs a little bit deeper, and it plays smoother. This uh, before polyfill is all choppy. This blue line here, chop chop chop. Well, it's not choppy after that. We cleaned up some resonance, probably both uh, cabinet and cone, and what. I find interesting. I, I don't know <laughs> what this is all about. We got an, a, like a phase reversal right there. That's, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that is all about. I really don't. But uh, before polyfill, it, we had a peak there. And after polyfill, we have a, you know, a dip. It's like a cancellation, something, yeah, it's, it's like a cancellation's happening. But the uh, green line is, you know, after polyfill and that is a, a, a definite improvement. Down here where we have a, a giant hole. Now nah, the green line is uh, a yeah, whole lot less of a giant hole. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I would spend a little time and effort here for the uh, stuffing in the gasket. It would make, it would make a perceived difference. And it, and it did, I mean, you can physically see it. You know, where it was bad before, it's, it's better. It's still bad, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm not, I'm, it is what it is. You know, I, I, you can't shine poop, it only smears. But uh, <laughs> these, these do tune up. You can tune this up. You can go a whole lot better even with uh, digital EQ, and I do that later on, which uh, I'll get into. But uh, all right, so that's, that's what the woofer did. And now look at it on, uh, on the three foot uh, away, from, away from the speaker after the polyfill and where's my thing here before and after there we go uh after the polyfill I, it's it's a little smoother right there's a difference there there's a there's a, a greater balance point and again everything was set at 80 decibels everything was measured at exactly the same way same on axis same distances and uh, this is the three foot away from speaker now keep in mind this speaker is up against that wall i'm getting the speaker boundary reinforcement from that wall and you know all that jazz but that's that's uh, what's highlighted there is after the polyfill and what's highlighted there was before polyfill so yeah it's it's not as it's not as pretty as you would want it to to, to you know look like but it's better. It's a little smoother. It's not quite as a wild and radical swings. It's a little, a little flatter here in the middle. And eh, is it worth it? Yeah, I think it is because I could, I could hear the difference. There was a difference. I didn't know exactly what had changed, you know, uh, uh, specific frequencies, but I could tell there was a difference because I had a A's and B's. I could literally hear it. Um, you know, playing one that was modified and playing one that wasn't. It's, there's definitely a change, and you can hear it. Uh, for the two dollars, you know, five dollars, whatever, you know, for a little bit of gasket and uh, polyfill, yeah, it's worth it. I would do that. And then let's take a look at the uh, six foot Zell uh, and Zell. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I, I don't think these uh, these didn't line up all that well, did they? Yeah, I can't. They're not getting any closer than that. I uh, I had them all at 80 decibels. I don't know what what changed here, but uh, you know they're they're almost mirror images of one another. There's a little difference here. You know, it's, it's again, it's ah, uh, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a tough call on this one. You're getting more of my room involved with the uh, six foot measurement because well, you know, you're getting further away from the speaker, right? So you're going to hear a lot more of the room and uh, all of that effect. But that's after the modification and that's before the modification. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's, you know, that, that's certainly nothing uh, pretty at all, 
<laughs> they're almost mirroring one another. Almost made no difference. But uh, we can see after polyfilm, a little little hotter here in the 600 to 800 uh, hertz range. I got a couple of you know camel humps there. And, ah, pick your poison, right? We got a, got a little dip here around 3, 3K where we didn't have it before. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, things were changing. There was definitely some, some dampening that happened. Now, what, uh, what I want to show you here real quick, that's, that's basically, you know, the, the, the speaker themselves in the room. I want to show you what it looks like after, uh, the before and after uh, with the, uh, the waterfall here. Look at, look at what the polyfill actually did. Let me bring them up real quick now. We're gonna just uh, look at uh, on speaker. Three foot, no, three foot. Come on, Michael, pay attention. Yeah, let's look at the tweeter here. Okay, here we go. Uh, the, uh, the the waterfall here, we're, we're, we're looking at ringing, we're looking for ringing. See all these peaks down here, you know? Uh, that's you, you, ideally in an ideal world with an ideal speaker, you wouldn't want to see that. You'd like this, this to drop off, you know, and just stop, like right there. When you see peaks like this, that means there's 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 noise that's still playing. There's, there's it's it's not, uh, it's probably not in the music. It's not being commanded to do it. There's just a, a, a resonance or a, there's stored energy. Let's put it that way. That's how that would break down. Uh, it takes, you know, sometimes it takes a minute for sound to dissipate, right? I mean, think of how long an echo takes to dissipate in a, you know, a very reverberish type of room, right? It takes time for sound to dissipate. But uh, this is uh, ringing. <laughs> it's, it's ringing pretty good here like around a thousand hertz, um, you know, right here around 727 hertz, uh, th you know, 1300 hertz, uh, 14, where, where was I? Yeah, 13, yeah, 1400 hertz there. Uh, and uh, you got some more up here around uh, uh, 2.7K kilohertz. That's what it did before I stuffed it with polyfill. And this is what it did after. Now I didn't run this sweep as low and I, I didn't realize that I I, I should have done exactly the same thing. I mean, that, that's before polyfill, right? And that's after polyfill. I mean, it's, uh, it looks a little cleaner, but then again, it's not as... I didn't run the sweep as low as I did on the other one. I, I, uh... <laughs> I wish I had. I didn't, I didn't realize that I didn't do that. Anyway, that's uh, after polyfill. I clearly only ran up from 1,000 to uh, 20,000 here on axis, on speaker, but that's after polyfill and that's before polyfill. So if you're only looking from 1,000 up, you know, follow this white line. And the difference between, you know, that and that, that and that. It did make a difference, right? I mean, there, there is, it looks visually different anyway. Um, yeah, dampening. Now, I don't believe for a second this had anything to do with the polyfill. It would have had more to do with the gasket material, uh, dampening the box in that very specific uh, location. And two, moving the tweeter a little bit higher, right? It didn't sit, it didn't sit in the uh, front baffle as low after the gasket material was, was installed as it did before the gasket material. So, you know, there's a couple of things going on there. But, uh, you know, that's what the tweeter looks like. And then the woofer, well, let's, let's do before, after, before and after. The woofer, you know, running from 20 to 20, you can see there, there's, there's a horrible freaking peak right here. And this is what, probably what's causing some of that, uh, that boost and whatnot on the bottom end right around 100 hertz. Uh, well, this is showing up at 120, but it's, it's a hell of a resonant uh, spike there. That's, I mean, it's <laughs> quite, uh, quite the king of, of, of noise right there, uh, or resonance. But uh, you, ideally, in an ideal world, you wouldn't want that, right? But uh, this is what it looks like after polyfill. Before polyfill, lots of ringing. 
after polyfill. So, I mean, we still got this w one major problem here, which, you know, that's probably in the speaker cone itself. There's nothing, nothing I'm going to be able to do about that. Maybe tune it out a little, but otherwise, I mean, there, there's just something mechanical going on with the speaker. That's, I'm, I'm sure that's what's causing that. But, you know, look at, all, look at all the ringing, you know, before and after. Before polyfill and gasket material, and after polyfill and gasket material. Again, this, this is worth the two, two or five dollars, you know, worth of, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? A little, little bit of attention to detail here cleans it up quite a bit. I mean, you, you're getting under 50 decibels, you know, you're gonna be, especially when you're playing at 80, you're, you're never gonna hear this. But, uh, you know, when you, when you start <laughs> getting up here around 65 decibels and you're playing at 80, you know what I mean? Certain things might really stand out to you. But anyway, point, point I was trying to prove here is that polyfill and that gasket material definitely made a nice improvement. Um, and it didn't cost much, you know, time is basically what you're gonna have invested into it. Because poly is cheap and the gasket material is cheap and there you go. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the, the measurement section here. I don't think I really have anything important to show or, or talk about, at least here. Um, this video is already pretty long, but uh, I'm trying to be thorough. I'm trying, I'm trying to do for you what I wish everybody would do for me. When I sit down and I watch a speaker video, I need this stuff. I, I just, I need it. <laughs> So I'm just trying to do it all, you know, my way for you guys. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you appreciate it. Do the thumbs and the subscribes and the bells and the whistles and all that crap, too. Uh, that lets me know. Anywho, um, moving along, moving along. Well, it's a boot that time. Ready for some uh, A's, B's comparisons. And uh, I'm going to do that proper, hopefully. Uh, as best as I can, with some binaural acoustical in this room, real world sound measurements. I've got uh, that uh, Ankiya receiver that's going to be driving everything right there. Uh, too dark, I can't see it. Uh, TXNR656 is what that is. That's going to be driving the uh, Whatever, that date and audio there, and uh, that date and audio there, and uh, my JBLs, they're, they're not doing anything. That's powered by a totally different receiver, which is turned off. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, my, this is my living room. This is the space I have to work with, and it's, uh, well, hey, it is what it is, right? So, this is how I'm going to show and tell. I'm going to be doing it using ears, like I said before, mentioned before. That, that is set up uh, mid-height. Hopefully it looks that way to you on camera. It's positioned like the ears are almost, you know, right in line where the, uh, well, whatever, in between the uh, tweeter and, and, and the uh, main uh, woofer there. So, oh, and, and they are eight feet from, yeah, speaker. Each ear is eight foot away from each speaker. So left speaker here, eight foot away, right speaker there, eight foot away. And we're going to uh, whatever, play a whole bunch of sound samples here is what we're going to do. I have um, I put together some stuff. It, it's all, all, hey, I got the rights to it. Okay, so Google, I'm talking to you now. Google, stop flagging my crap. Okay, you're pissing me off. I have the rights to this stuff. You lose the battle every time you challenge me. Just, okay, AI, whatever Google AI is listening to this. I own the rights to these songs, so leave me alone. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Christ's sake. Anywho, um, I got some musical, some with vocals, and uh, I'm gonna do A's and B's as best I can here. These are the ones that I, uh, yeah, I, I modified. I put the, uh, the packing material in there, the, the polyfill, and I sealed them acoustically, you know, properly, hopefully, as best I could anyway, for spending a dime on them. I'm gonna play them as they are. You're gonna hear that. And then also I'm gonna use the subwoofer down there, which when I turn that on, I guess I'll, uh, I'll show you what that's all about. It's also the Dayton Audio Sub. It's the, there's a 12 inch sub down there. But uh, I want you to hear this before and after modifications. And then I'm also going to play the original audio file as I download it. These are high quality recordings as they are high quality 
original files. Everything is uh, 48 kilohertz at 20 bit depth. So, you know, it's, it's as good as it really needs to be for you to tell any, you know, any kind of difference. But these I'm going to play uh, EQ'd flat, which I have them digitally equalized to, you know, almost dead flat. They're, they're incredible. Uh, what I was able to get out of them. And uh, the, uh, the other ones, when I, when I want to do an A, B side by side on those, I will have them just out of the box, just as they are. Uh, everything's set to zero. Nothing's going to be played with or modified. So you can hear exactly what they sound like out of the box. And then you can hear what they sound like after a little bit of modification and tuning. And then you're going to hear what they sound like with modification tuning and a subwoofer. Uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, involved, but hey, I'm spending the time. So I hope you spend the time and, and finish the video. It's the only way you're going to know which side is up with these things. So, uh, all right, enough talking. Let's start, uh, let's start making some real noise, huh?
give up control Hope falls from the sky as I lift up my hands and speak
was clear to me we miscommunicated you equivocated you've already moved on i'm alone and so damn jaded and i hate it cause all i needed was a simple yes or
But you were never mine And I know it's time that I face reality finished uh, modifying packing and sealing that very last speaker there so all six of them now yeah all tuned up all modified with uh, two cents worth of product and I got this giant box of polyfill here it was brand new when I started and um, well still looks brand new if you ask me <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah, yeah well that's just the way it is you know this stuff doesn't weigh nothing it's about as light as air so uh, it takes a lot, and I put a lot in. I really did. I I, I packed them. I mean, I they're they're you know hey they're packed, and uh, yeah, really didn't make a dent in the box. So all right, nothing to do yet, I guess, except uh, I already did all the measurements before and after. I got all my sound samples. Uh, I guess we gotta set up, uh, give you my final thoughts and opinions, and uh, I. Uh, I, I did test that guy out. I got all the sound samples on that. I got to do the, basically the unboxing and what on it and uh, finish off that portion of it. But uh, yeah, I got all the sound samples for the, the Dayton Audio Sub. And um, yeah, all right, enough talking here, I guess. Well, <laughs> talk a little more. But anyway, getting ready to wrap this up. Alrighty. So Dayton Audio, huh? How about that? Um, I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking. They are, uh, they're hard to rate. <laughs> I, I've been, I spent some time thinking about how I'm going to rate this uh, because of your use case scenario and because of their potential and because of what they are out of the box and what they can become yeah it's 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 ah it's uh i'm having a hard time with it i really am um but i i think i've i think I'm, i've dialed it down um hopefully i've shown you everything you never wanted to know about speakers but uh no really this is uh this was worth it i'm glad i, I took the measurements uh, i am unfortunately out of time i gotta install these uh tomorrow so i i i, I got no more times to run any more tests and I would like to do a few more things, but uh, yeah, the before and after the modification, um, you've seen those those test results. I can tell you it makes a, a nice improvement in the way they sound. Um, with some digital EQ, man, you can get them almost ruler flat and uh, they need it, <laughs> they need it. But once you do that, modify them, the little bit of uh, show and tell that I showed and told you, told you, uh, you cue them flat, I mean, ain't nobody's going to have a hard time sitting down and listening to them. Uh, you, you're not going to get no real bass out of them unless you, you know, get some of that boundary reinforcement, that kind of thing. So you got to get them up against a wall. Uh, if you have them pretty much the way I showed and told, uh, if you do them like that, they're going to surprise you. They really will. I mean, they surprise me anyway. Uh, when I was running some of the frequency sweeps, I mean, I, I don't remember off the top of my head how low these were these were going, but I was running a twenty to twenty. That's how I was. That's how I was running that sweep. Uh, you know, I played them full range. I, I know what the specs said, but uh, yeah, I want to find out what they really do. 
and <laughs> these things were digging. They were digging. Uh, I think they were they were hitting you know 45 hertz, reasonably you know well. And I, I'll tell you what you know when uh, when I was running the sweeps, they was shaking my walls a bit. You know things were rattling in here a little bit. You know, but the point is they were doing it. They were you know they got some uh, they got a little kick to them. The 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 these AMT tweeters. I mean that's just. I'm not saying these are good ones. Um, clearly, they have some issues, but uh, I still think you know a bad one, a bad AMT is better, you know, than any of the uh, you know mid-range uh, little dome tweeters, especially the metal ones. I don't care the titanium and all that crap. Oh man, you want your ears to bleed? You go down that route. These are, have always been you know relatively tame from my experience, and I've I've got uh, I've got a fair bit of experience now with uh, the AMTs. Uh, becoming quickly my very favorite tweeter. I like silk domes and I love these. So yeah, between those two, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I think you get more de I, I'm sure you get more detail out of these over a silk dome, but silk dome is, well, it's silky smooth. Anywho, um, yeah, the frequency response, it is what it is. Um, the, the, the sound clips that you heard, it should go without saying, but uh, I guess I gotta say it anyway. Don't listen to that crap on the cell phone. You can't hear nothing on that, right? Uh, use a proper home theater system. If you've got a 5.1, you know, you'll, you'll get a feel for it that way. And uh, of course, of course, headphones. Um, I use both, so uh, pick your poison there. But it's just a crude representation of what these things truly sound like because it's your equipment. It's your room. It's your listening apparatus and environment. It's totally different than this one. This room, this equipment that I used, you know what I mean? It's just the best guess, closest approximation I can show and tell you how these things truly sounded, how they truly work out. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just a hard one to rate though because man, it's it's got it where it counts if you're willing to work with it. Um, you know, you gotta <clears throat> digitally EQ them, which is how I did it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> once you do that, that, oh man, it just, it, it, they become a different story. They really do. Um, I like them. So here, here's, here's what I, I think I'm, how I figured out to break this down. If you're gonna pull them out of the box and do nothing to them, put them on a bookshelf stand or something like that in the middle of your room and you know, no, no wall boundary reinforcement of any kind. If you're gonna listen to them like that, I think I'm gonna give them a five. They don't sound all that good, right out of the box. If you give them a lot of room to breathe, nah, they, they got no bass. Um, you know, you saw the you saw the uh, acoustical measurements. You saw the dips in the hole. Well, there's holes in them, and you're gonna hear it. Um, it's just what it is. No, I mean, I, I'm gonna give them a five. That's 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 what they are. But then you two, you do the same thing. You know, out of the box, get them up against a wall. Now, now you got some bass. Now. Now the things are talking to you. Uh, <laughs> it's a whole lot better, but uh, you know you still got those holes. The uh, the frequency response is kind of all over the map, and you're still going to hear it. But at least you're going to have some bass now, and uh, you know every everybody likes that bass. Um, I, I don't know why. It's just we all do. Uh, yeah. Still, I mean. I, I'm gonna give it a five and a half up against a wall. Once you do the modifications that I showed, you know, just seal them up and, you know, stuff them like a teddy bear with polyfill. Uh, once you do that to them, yeah. And then you cue them flat. I'm giving them a six. It's still up against the wall, but they, they sound better everywhere. Just everywhere, they're much improved. So yeah, between a five and a six, that's, that's where I wanna rate them. But like I said, once you make these little mods to them, and even with that, that you can EQ them flat, but there's still some ring and it, it just, you, you're gonna wanna spend the $2 or whatever it cost for polyfill and that gasket material. All that stuff's gonna be in, you know, description down there. So that'll save you time and search and I'll just, you know, put a link to all that stuff, make it easier for you guys. But uh, yeah, once, once you spend a dime on them, you know, <laughs> They're, they're pretty damn okay. They really are. I, I, I don't want to call them good because they're just on that borderline for me. Um, 
but they can be good. You, you, you know what I mean? You, you got to work with them to get them there, but damn it, they'll go there. That's what I'm trying to get get across here. Um, I like I I like that they're 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 a six inch driver with uh, uh, you know such a small little box. It's like 12 inches tall, tiny little box. Now, if if you're kind of on the fence, like I'm sure a lot of people are, you see these little satellite speakers. Oh yeah, they're so cute and adorable. They fit everywhere. They go with all kinds of decor. Yeah, and they're all trash. And this is my opinion, okay? But I've heard tons of them, and I hate all of them. They are little baby speakers, and they sound like it. If you want to hear sound, if you want to hear, if you want to hear, really hear it, you got to move the air. And you know, a little three-inch speaker only moves, you know, a little three-inch speaker worth of air. Six-inch speakers moving six-inch speaker worth of air. You know what I mean? You got to move that air to get that presence. And uh, these things, my room is not very wide, so it's, it's probably a crappy example for, you know, a sound stage. But uh, from, and I didn't, I didn't measure it, I, I, but I'm just telling you what I heard, heard and you're going to hear the same thing. You're going to want to run them without the grill. You put the grill on, and they, they just kind of beam at you. The, just, the grill's crappy. It, it fits like crap, too. Uh, see if you can... Uh, See the gap in there? I mean, it, it's it's just, you know, what do you want for a nickel? <laughs> yeah, I just take the grill off and, you know, chuck it. I, I, I would recommend just, you know, yeah, don't even waste your time with a grill. You're going to hear it. I mean, anybody's going to hear the difference. Big difference in soundstage with the grill on versus off. But, man, you spend a little bit of time playing around with them, and they're, they're pretty cool. If you wanted a fun project, I'll tell you what, the, the best way, I think, it's probably the most expensive way also, but the best way to get maximum uh, performance out of these would be to make them 100% active. You can either do that individually per speaker with, you know, a, a, an amp and a DSP, or you can use, you know, a dedicated amp and then DSP it there and just, you know, run multiple sets of wires. Um, but yeah, bu uh, buy amp these and then, uh, you know, DSP them, you know, make them 100% active. And there you go. That's... Uh, now you got complete control over each speaker individually, because that little crossover is a piece of crap. That's, you know, <laughs> there ain't nothing nice I can say about it. Um, it just is, it just is what it just is. Uh, they spent literally five cents on that, you know, joke of a crossover, and all they're doing are just blocking a little bass to that tweeter. Um, but they they play wide, they play loud. Uh, man, they're, 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 they're really freaking okay. <laughs> That's how I'm breaking it down. So, um, all right, I I think I've said everything I need to say. Hopefully I've shown everything, you know, that, that you guys really care about. Uh, you know, I wanted to get into it without, you know, getting, you know, too far going on them, but uh, yeah, they were, uh, they were, they were worth the money, uh, especially with what I, what I can get out of them digitally, you know, with some EQ. Um, my father-in-law, he's gonna love them. And, uh, you know, again, bigger speakers, more sound, more filling, you know, filling a room. These little baby things, well, yeah, no, they just don't. I mean, again, that's my opinion, but, you know, it's still fact. You know, you can't, can't break these laws of physics here. Big speaker move more air. Little speaker move little air. Yeah, that's just the way it breaks down. So, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's going to work great in a home theater. And uh, if, if I've learned anything in my years of playing around with these things, well, not these, but speakers in general, is the more speakers you have, the more gooder it sounds. That's just the way it is. You got problems with your rooms. Everybody has problems with their rooms. I got major problems with this rooms. I got treatment all over the place. You know what fixed it the quickest and the best way I've found to fix it? Add more speakers. <laughs> That's just how it broke down. More speakers, more gooder. Uh, this is just going to be a 5.1, and I'm going to do the subwoofer uh, review next, but I have everything measured. And, uh, yeah, so do the subscribes, the thumbs, the bells, whistles, you know, that that whole song and dance routine. And, uh, yeah, because I'm going to do the subwoofer thing next. So, um, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to try, because, like I said, tomorrow I'm going to install these. I'm going to try to do a short and sweet uh, show and tell once they're finally in their resting final resting place. Uh, just to give you an idea what that looks and sounds like. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try. I, I don't know if I'm, 
I don't know how they're going to feel about me recording their environment, but uh, if they don't mind me doing it, I'm going to do it. So, all right, that's going to wrap this one up. I um, hope you found this helpful, maybe a little entertaining or, uh, you know, whatever. Just do the, you know, this thing and the ding, ding bells and all that crap. And hey, all right, we're going to see you in the next one. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Cheers.